You really don't. Okay. No. New day. <laughs> I want to thank my colleague, uh, Lindsey Graham, for joining me today as we reintroduce uh, the DREAM Act. Uh, we are also going to be joined uh, in ori as original co-sponsors by Senator Schumer as well as Senator Flake. Uh, I have introduced this bill over uh, many years. Uh, it started 16 years ago. It has two basic premises, two basic reasons. First, we don't believe that young people should be held responsible for the errors or the illegal actions of their parents. Number two, we believe that those who were brought to the United States as children have grown up in this country, have no criminal record, who are prepared to serve this country in a variety of ways should be given that chance to make America a better nation. Over the years, we have tried many times to pass this legislation. We've been able to pass it in the Senate one year, in the House another year. We've never quite brought it together. We need the DREAM Act now more than ever because of the uncertainty that these young people face all across America not just with the DREAM Act in general, but the DACA program itself, an executive order of President Obama. I've been fortunate to have as my uh, friend and my ally in the effort to deal with this issue, uh, Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina. We were part of the Gang of Eight back in the day and uh, produced a bill which passed, a bipartisan bill, which passed a uh, comprehensive immigration reform on the floor of the Senate with 68 votes. We had 14 Republican votes that day, and uh, 11 of them, I believe, are still in the United States Senate. So we believe that those who have voted for the DREAM Act as part of comprehensive immigration reform, uh, we hope can be persuaded to join us again and perhaps uh, bring in some new converts to our cause. We have a lot of work to do, but we, I myself am uh, strengthened, if not emboldened, by these young people. They've come forward, they've come out of the shadows, a risky proposition they have identified themselves so that America can understand what, who the young people are who will be affected by this law. I've met them, teachers, engineers, medical students, just wonderful young people who have made a great life in America. They've grown up pledging allegiance to this flag, singing the Star Spangled Banner in the only country they've ever known. All they're asking for now is a chance to earn their way into legal status, earn their way into citizenship. That's what the DREAM Act does. I couldn't have a better partner in this effort than my friend Lindsey Graham. Well, thank you. Uh, to the uh, great-grandfather of the DREAM Act. Uh, so Dick has been at this for how long? 16. 16 years. So um, I don't know how much longer it's going to take, but I'm hopeful it won't take much longer. So let me tell you uh, to the Trump administration. I appreciate the fact that you focused on getting the bad hombres out of the country because nobody wants crooks uh, to stay in the country, legal or illegal. So the idea that President Trump has focused on criminal illegal aliens is a good thing. The fact that President Trump wants to build a secure border, create a secure border, is a good thing. The fact that President Trump has said, when it comes to these kids, they're really great. I have a heart for these kids. That's a good thing. So what are we trying to do? A good thing. And 10 state attorney generals are going to go back into court and make the argument that the 800,000 DACA kids can no longer be given legal status through executive action by President Trump. That what President Obama did was beyond the scope of the power of the president. And if President Trump continues that practice, that also will be under the outside the scope of the president. By September the 5th, we will have a decision. I don't know how the court's going to rule. But I think there's a very good argument that the president doesn't have the power to just grant legal status, no matter how sympathetic the group would be to 800,000 people. Here's what I would say. These DACA kids have come out of the shadows at the invitation of their government. We're in a dispute about the power of their government, but they took President Trump up on the offer, identify yourselves, come out of the shadows, and if you're a non-felon, 
if you meet the criteria of not being a bad hombre or a bad lady, then you can stay with a legal status that is renewable. The question for the Republican Party is what do we tell these people? How do we treat them? Here's my answer. We treat them fairly. We do not pull the rug out from under them. As to this population, the DREAM Act covers more than the 800,000. There's well over a million people who were brought here as young people, some as babies, some as grade schoolers, by their parents illegally. And if you told them to go back home, they would go to where they were raised. They're no more connected with a foreign country than I am. The truth of the matter is, most of them, since young children, have been raised in our country, have assimilated into being an American, would like to stay here, and would add value if we're smart enough to say yes. We're talking about people who've been here for a long time, not a short time, came here before they were 18, they haven't committed a felony, they graduate from high school or get a GED, they're pursuing higher education, either serve two years in the military or work lawfully for three years, fulfill an English language requirement, have undergone a criminal background check and paid a fee. What I've described would knock half of my family out. <laughs> the English felony thing gets a lot of them. You can't stay here out of an act of charity. You stay here if you can prove that you're moving in the right direction, you can add value to our country. And if you can do all the things I've described, under our bill, you can stay and one day get a green card and become an American citizen. To the DREAM Act population, they may be some bad, but overwhelmingly, you're good. I have met you too. I'm excited about giving you a chance to live the rest of your life in America. I'm excited about taking this burden off your back. I embrace you. I want you to succeed. Many of you will go into the military and some of you may die. Many of you will create jobs, start businesses, do big things. Most of you will do the small things well. So to President Trump, you're going to have to make a decision. The campaign is over to the Republican Party. Who are we? What do we believe? Uh, the moment of reckoning is coming. When they write the history of these times, I'm going to be with these kids. To my good friend John McCain, <clears throat> you asked me how he's doing. He has called me three times this morning. No more woe is me, Lindsay. He is yelling at me to buck up. So I'm going to buck up. How did I get started in immigration reform? The state of South Carolina, the good news for me is I do well with Hispanics. The bad news for me, you can fit them all in the room. Not a big Hispanic population. I got involved because when John ran for president in 2000, he wanted to fix a broken immigration system because he is from Arizona and he sees the downside of illegal immigration where criminals come across. He sees the abuse of the coyotes. He sees women living in the shadows and have no rights and are being exploited and on and on and on. So I started because John asked me. I've been doing this with Senator McCain and others now since 2005 and six, I have come to believe that comprehensive immigration reform, whether done in piecemeal fashion 
are done comprehensively is absolutely essential for our national security. It's absolutely essential uh, for our economic viability. And as I want to stop the third wave and never do this again, we've got to have a practical solution to the 11 million. I am hoping we can find a pathway forward with President Trump. Wouldn't it be ironic if the man who started his campaign talking about illegal immigration in a very tough way would be the man who started the country on the path of solving the problem? This problem will not fix itself. I am from South Carolina. I have been doing this for well over a decade and I am still standing. I have convinced the people of my state that I'm going to stop the best I can a third wave of illegal immigration. I will secure your border and I will make sure that illegal immigrant hiring becomes less likely because we're going to put people in jail in the future, hire illegal immigrants. And we're going to have an economic based immigration system in the out years. And all I ask of you is to allow me to work with people like Senator Durbin to find a way to deal with 11 million people who came here mostly because the rest of us look the other way. How do you get 11 million illegal immigrants in your country? You pretty much look the other way. As to the Dream Act kids, of all the 11 million, these young people have the most compelling story. President Trump, as you fix a broken immigration system, Remember, that you have the power to fix lives as well. Use that power. Great. Any questions? Mr. Rapp, what is the biggest hurdle we're facing in passing this legislation? Biggest hurdle? Um, big bills are hard to explain. If you're in the House, it's easier to vote no because immigration reform is not a popular topic in a Republican primary. Um, here's what I think. I think President Trump is right to focus on criminal aliens. He's right to increase border protections. He is right to say that these kids are good kids. Here's what's changed. You have a president who if he said tomorrow the border was secured, most people would believe him on my side. I could put alligators on the border, and I'm not getting there. In 2008 or whenever the Gang of Eight bill was, we literally militarized the border. But I don't have the power he does to tell the Republican base that we have achieved border security. What has changed? You have a president who could, in a snap of his finger, get the Republican Party united more than Bush could, persuade people who feel threatened by illegal immigration that they're going to take their jobs and commit crimes against their family, and persuade them this is a fair thing to do, unlike President Obama was able to do. What has changed? A man in the White House who could take the people who object, object the most and with a coherent, from the heart speech, change everything. Senator, how about the White House yesterday? You know, they had um, you know, White House officials telling certain media outlets, including La Opinion, that um, Trump is not going to sign any DREAM Act because his priority, as he promised during the campaign, is enforcement first. Uh, let me just say that Senator Graham and I have been actively engaged with the White House for weeks, if not months, uh, in conversation about DACA, the Bridge Act, and the DREAM Act. We believe there are people within that White House who want to continue this dialogue and conversation, uh, and we are going to work with them. Uh, we're not giving up on, as Senator Graham said, appealing to the administration to join us in this effort. 
There are certain things which Republicans can't do in the process. There are certain things Democrats can't do. We're trying to find that sweet spot, that middle ground that takes care of the dreamers and border security. Senator Graham, can I ask you briefly about your sure. friend John McCain? I know you spoke sure. three times already today. Yeah. We talked to him many more on this day. To simply put, for those as we sort of celebrate mm. him today in a way as he, as he begins this fight, how is the Senate different without Senator McCain here? Uh, it's quieter. <laughs> Uh, it's hugely different because John is a fighter and, you know, he jumps into every cause, uh, no matter how hard it might be, the energy he provides. Uh, he's coming back. The, the disease. Uh, I think they, they got it. Uh, he's going to go through radiation and chemo. I'm not a doctor. It may come back again and he'll fight it again. But right now he's in good spirits. It was a, a really tough operation. But John is ready to come back, and I ask one thing of the good Lord. <clears throat> Just give him a chance for what time he's got left and I've got left to be relevant. I think John um, is a force that Dick can tell you about uh, that, that is unique to him. Uh, he has um, done things that most people could not do. And going forward, he's excited, quite frankly, about getting a second chance to finish things that have been stuck. So when he comes back here, I hope you'll talk about immigration. Hope we'll listen to it. Do you have any idea um, how big the universe of people is that could be included in this bill? No, there are 780,000 have signed up for DACA so far, and I've just heard speculation over a million uh, that might be qualified. Uh, I'm just not sure what the number is. Is there an upper age limit? Yes, well, in this respect, um, you had to have come to this country 17 years of age or younger, you must have been in this country for four years as of the effective date of the legislation. What are the chances for this bill to pass, given the fact that there is an anti-immigrant sentiment coming from the White House itself? Well, I want Lindsay to, to address this as well. But I think uh, that this is the one area of immigration where we can find common ground. There are conservative Republican senators who've never voted on the issue, who've come to me privately and said, I want to work with you on this. There's got to be a way we can do this. So uh, I am hopeful that even in an anti-immigrant climate from the last election, when it comes to solving this problem and others like border security, we can find some common ground. And I could just say there are a lot of Republicans who make a point that I agree with. Well, if you give these kids, who are all great kids, amnesty or legal status, aren't you enticing more to come? The key here is to be fair to the 11 million, starting with the dreamers, but convince people we're going to do what our great friend Ronald Reagan was not able to do. We're going to actually secure the border, control who gets a job, increase legal immigration so people don't have to cheat. I wouldn't be doing this unless I believe there was a way forward to prevent the third wave. But these kids, uh, are running out of asphalt. They're running out of runway. They came out of the shadows at the invitation of their government. They've identi identified themselves and their legal standing is now in question. It becomes, I think, almost a moral decision. If you ask people to show yourself, identify yourself to your own government, and you do that, then you pull the rug out from under them. You take their legal status away. I just don't think that's what America is all about. I think most Americans, including most Republicans, have like zero problem with allowing these kids to stay if they do the things I described. They're not crooks and uh, that they did come here as young people, no fault of their own. To the people who, you, who object to this, I don't want you to vote for me because I cannot serve you well. I just don't see the upside of telling these kids they have to go back, live in the shadows, or send them back to a country they have no idea about the country. If you send them back to their native country, some of them have never been there as, as anything other than a baby. So I just think most Americans would support President Trump if we could work out a plan to deal with these kids and secure the border, I think most Republicans would. So what have I done? I've stopped letting 30% of the people who are mad about immigration determine how I behave. To those who feel like you should deport these kids, boy, I couldn't disagree with you more. 
Senator We're going to take two last questions. Yes. Yeah, I wanted to actually ask Senator Grant possible about health care. We had a new CBO score come out. Well, we, can we stick on topic? Yeah, stick on this. Let's stick on topic. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. Secretary Kelly has repeatedly said that he would be in favor of uh, supporting these young people, provided there's legislation. And here's the legislation. So have you engaged with Secretary Kelly? Has he shown any indication that he's backing this piece of legislation? Okay. Uh, when John Kelly speaks, everybody listens. Uh, he says you need legislation, not administrative executive action, to deal with a broken immigration system. And he says he's broken. And he's calling on Congress to fix it. Secretary Kelly serves at the pleasure of the president. I think John Kelly is the guy we should go to and say, come up with a border security plan that you believe will protect our nation from illegal crossing and also do something about the 40 percent of the illegal immigrants who overstay their visa. He was a four-star Marine Corps general. He was in charge of Southern Command. If John Kelly came out with a border security plan, it would be really hard for most of us to vote no because he's so qualified. General Kelly has said, as to these kids, he has no animosity. He has called on Congress to act. Here's what I bet. If he came out with a interior border security plan that was rational and met our needs as a nation and there was legislation that would deal with these kids knowing general kelly the way i do i think he would be inclined to support it one more question on this Yes. Um, pardon me. Um, so uh, I know you've been working on this for a long time, um, but the bill seems, and, and Senator, you were saying that um, it, it affects people who came here as children, but um, if, if I'm reading it correctly, I mean, it would include some of the people from the border surge of 2013, right? So some of the much more recent arrivals, right? And these folks would be able to eventually get citizenship and sponsor their parents. So it's a much broader, you know, the, this bill does not include. Uh, th th this bill doesn't include that bill doesn't include that provision about sponsoring parents and such. It, it gives them a path to green cards and ultimately a path to citizenship. Uh, beyond that, it doesn't speak to the families and, and how they would be treated. But we have always tried when we write this legislation to put in a timetable so that no one can game the system. Oh, we hear they're doing the dream. Act. Let's head for America. You know, so four years. You have to be here four years, you know, as of the effective date of this bill. So it, it, it'll include people who fit within that category, but we have create, we tried to, to eliminate the incentive to come racing to America because uh, Lindsey Graham and Durbin had a press conference. But citizens can't sponsor their parents. Well, but we are not changing that law. We're not changing any of these laws with this dream. It's not about the parents, it's about them.